Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about the different types of adventitious lung sounds. So let's get started. Adventitious lung sounds are abnormal sounds that you hear during auscultation that shouldn't be there. And I want to cover five main types that you want to be familiar with. The first type is known as crackles. These are also sometimes called rels and you can further divide them into fine crackles and coarse crackles. There's also wheezes, ronchi, strider, and plurifriction rub. Now, whenever you're auscultating lung sounds and you're trying to identify that particular abnormal sound that you're hearing, you wanna make sure that you ask yourself the following questions. The first question deals with timing. Ask yourself, are you hearing this mainly on inspiration or expiration or even both? Then try to determine the pitch of the sound. Is it high pitch or low pitched? Followed by if this sound is considered discontinuous or continuous. This refers to the length and the nature of that sound or sounds produced. For example, if the abnormal sounds are distinguishable individually and occur in succession, such as the individual pops and fine crackles, and those sounds generally last less than 250 milliseconds, the sound is considered discontinuous. However, if the sound is more constant in nature, generally lasting longer than around 250 milliseconds, it is considered continuous. And then another question you wanna ask yourself is about location of that sound. Where are those sounds mainly heard? Are they mainly heard in the large airways, like the trachea, the large bronchi, or those smaller airways, which involves the alveoli and the bronchioles? And then lastly, try to determine if this sound has a defining characteristic to it that's just really hard to ignore. For example, the sound sounds like a harsh grating noise, or squeaky musical whistling, or snoring, or squawking, which could hopefully help you determine what kind of sound you're hearing. So first, let's go over crackles. Fine crackles are sometimes referred to as rels. And the first thing what I want to do is I want you to listen to an example of what fine crackles may sound like. Now, how do you know that you're hearing fine crackles? Well, you wanna pay attention to the timing. With fine crackles, you're gonna hear those towards the end of inspiration, and they're gonna be really brief. You also wanna pay attention to that pitch. Fine crackles are going to be high pitched. You also wanna make sure that they are discontinuous, meaning that you're able to distinguish those individual popping cracking sounds that are occurring in a series, so they're intermittent. And these sounds tend to be located in small airways. Plus, they're gonna have this defining characteristic. They're gonna sound very similar to popping or light crackling of a fire, and they cannot be cleared with coughing. And again, let's listen to that sample of fine crackles. Now, what's causing this sound? Well, whenever the patient breathes air into those small airways, like the bronchioles or the alveoli, which are deflated or collapsed, it causes them to all of a sudden crackle or explode open, which allows you to hear that high pitch crackling noise. And fine crackles can occur in cases of congestive heart failure, actelectasis, pneumonia, and pulmonary fibrosis. Next up is coarse crackles. Let's listen to some audio of what coarse crackles may sound like. Now, how do you know that you're hearing coarse crackles? Well, you wanna pay attention to their timing. Coarse crackles tend to occur around the beginning of inspiration, but they can extend into expiration, and they tend to be longer than fine crackles. Also, their pitch is low and they are discontinuous. In addition, they tend to be located in the large airways, such as the bronchi, and they have specific defining characteristics. These coarse crackles tend to sound like a gurgling or bubbling sound that is not cleared with coughing. And again, let's listen to this audio of coarse crackles. Thank you. 
Now, what causes this sound? Well, it tends to occur whenever patients breathe air in to partially blocked airways, like those large airways such as the bronchi, that are filled with fluid or really thick mucus. So whenever you're trying to think of lung conditions that will cause this sound, think of lung conditions that present with fluid or thick mucus. And these conditions could include heart failure due to pulmonary edema, which is fluid in the lungs, or severe cases of pneumonia, or bronchiectasis, which is a chronic lung condition where the bronchi are enlarged due to chronic lung disease, for example, like cystic fibrosis, or infections that result in mucus secretions. Now let's talk about wheeze sounds. First, let's listen to some sample audio of what wheezes may sound like. Now, how do you know that you're hearing wheezes? Well, you wanna pay attention to the timing. With wheezes, you're mainly gonna hear them on expiration where they're gonna be the loudest, but you can note them on inspiration and expiration. And their pitch is going to be high. In addition, they're gonna be continuous and located throughout the respiratory system. And they will have a defining characteristic when you listen to them. They will have this squeaky musical whistling noise to them. And you may even be able to hear them without a stethoscope, especially if your patient's having an active asthma attack. Now it's important whenever you hear these sounds that they're not mainly coming from the throat area because this may indicate strider. And again, let's listen to that audio of what wheezes could sound like. So why is this sound occurring? Well, it occurs because the airways have started to narrow, meaning they have started to get smaller. So as air is squeezed through those airways, it creates this squeaky musical whistling sound. And it can occur in cases of asthma, COPD, or any type of lung infection that narrows those airways, like with a viral respiratory infection. Next is ronchi. So let's listen to some audio of what ronchi may sound like. Now, how can you know that you're hearing ronchi? Well, you wanna pay attention to the timing. Ronchi are mainly heard on expiration, but you can hear them along with inspiration. And they're gonna have a low pitch and be loud. In addition, they're gonna be continuous and located in large airways, like the trachea and the bronchus. And they're gonna have a defining characteristic, where when you listen to that sound, it's gonna sound like a snoring or a snorting sound that can decrease or go away with suctioning or coughing. Now, it's important to note that some literature will actually classify ronchi as a type of coarse crackle or a type of wheeze. So whenever you're trying to identify these lung sounds, always go by your facility or your professor's recommendations for how they want you to categorize ronchi. So again, let's listen to that audio of ronchi. Now what causes this sound? Well, it occurs whenever air leaves the trachea and bronchus and it hits secretions like mucus and fluid. And whenever it does this, it creates this snoring-like sound that you're hearing. And this can happen in cases of bronchitis, pneumonia, and COPD. Next is Strider. So let's listen to some audio of what Strider may sound like. Now, how do you know that you're hearing Strider? Well, you wanna pay attention to a few things. First thing is timing. Strider can be heard on inspiration or expiration, and it's going to have a high pitch. In addition, it's going to be continuous and located mainly in the upper respiratory system, like the trachea slash throat area. And it's gonna have a defining auditory characteristic that you really can't ignore. It's gonna sound like this screeching, squawking noise that's coming mainly from that throat area. So again, let's listen to this audio of Strider. Mm -hmm. 
So what causes this sound? Well, it's occurring because there's narrowing of the larynx and the trachea from swelling due to some type of infection or blockage from an object. And it can actually progress where that airway will be completely blocked off. Therefore, some cases of Strider are life-threatening and require immediate attention. So it depends on the severity of the Strider, how severe does it sound, and what is actually causing it. Now, Strider can be caused by cases of epiglottitis or croup, where you may hear it referred to as a barking cough in the pediatric population. It can also be caused in cases of anaphylaxis or if there is an object stuck in this throat region. Finally, we have pleurofriction rub. So let's listen to some audio of what a pleurofriction rub may sound like. Now, how do you know that you're hearing a pleurofriction rub? Well, you wanna pay attention to the timing. With pleurofriction rubs, they can occur on inspiration and expiration, and they're gonna have a low pitch to them. In addition, they can be discontinuous or continuous. It really depends on the severity of the rub and what's going on with your patient. And it's located in the pleura layer, which are the layers that surround your lungs, which is made up of the viscera pleura and the parotal pleura. In addition, it's going to have a defining characteristic that you're going to be able to note on auscultation. You're going to hear this harsh grating sound. In addition, your patient's probably going to have pain, especially when they take deep breaths in or they cough. Now let's listen to that audio of a pleurofriction rub again. So what causes this sound? Well, it occurs whenever those pleura layers become inflamed and rub up against each other because normally the visceral and the parietal pleura are separated by a small space. So as the patient breathes in, those layers will just glide over one another. But when those layers become inflamed, that space shrinks, which allows those layers now to rub up against each other, creating pain and that harsh grating noise that you're going to hear. And it can happen in cases of pleurisy, which just means inflammation of those pleura layers, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, tuberculosis, and some forms of lung cancer. Okay, so that wraps up this video. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this respiratory series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.